A mystery in a southern Kentucky cabin tonight. Police are trying to figure out why a man was shot and killed there over the weekend. A newly released report says the Lexington Fire Department should make changes to where certain fire stations are around the county. I don't know why, but it just happens to be all right. Some business owners say ongoing construction projects in downtown Lexington are driving customers away. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 6. Good evening. What led to a deadly shooting inside a southern Kentucky rental cabin? Tonight, police say they're trying to track down three persons of interest they hope can answer that question. The Pulaski County Sheriff's Office says 34-year-old Danny Poor was found dead over the weekend inside the cabin at the Pulaski County Park near Lake Cumberland. Sean Moody is tracking the investigation tonight. It's our top story at 6. This is the cabin where investigators said they found 34 year old Danny Poor dead yesterday afternoon. There are three other cabins here in this clearing, but investigators say so far they haven't been able to find any witnesses. These rental cabins haven't been here very long. A sheriff's deputy said Pulaski County Park is a popular spot and generally pretty quiet. The park's a very safe, safe place. Uh, tourist traffic there is considerable in the summer, and we just don't have any trouble there. But after getting a tip around 2 o'clock Sunday afternoon, they said they found 34 year old Danny Poor dead inside cabin four. They said he'd been shot. It, apparently, this individual or some individual had rented a cabin, and this is where the crime occurred. Pulaski County Sheriff's deputy said Poor was living in the Louisville area but was originally from Monticello. We have three people or four people of interest that we'd like to talk to that we're seeking at this time. This afternoon, Kleinard said those people of interest are Kara Whitney Bell, Jesse W. Brown, and Rexel K. Brown. Now, investigators say they're not sure exactly when Poor was killed, but they believe it was within the previous 24 hours before they found him. In Pulaski County, Sean Moody, WKYT. Somerset Police, Burnside Police, and Kentucky State Police are all helping with the investigation. New tonight, state police say a couple died in an accident outside a Bath County home. It happened this morning along Pine Grove Road in the Olympia community. Police say 66-year-old Ralph Davis and his 56-year-old wife Dorothy were trying to trim a tree when a limb fell on them. Police say both later died from their injuries. New tonight, Lexington police are looking for two men after shots were fired into three apartments. It happened just after four this afternoon in an apartment building on Lindhurst Drive off Palumbo Drive. Police say at least 10 shots were fired into the three units, but they say no one was injured. Lexington police say the two suspects left in a silver 2015 Toyota Camry that is a rental car. Tonight, Lexington police are trying to track down a driver they say crashed a stolen car into a home. It happened around 9.30 this morning on Buckhorn Drive near Alumni. A family was inside the home at the time of the crash. The car hit a front bedroom. Police say the driver then ran off. One man says the impact of the crash pushed him up against a wall. No, I knocked us back into the wall. Like He went in the closet. I hit the door. By the time we got up and got to see what was going on, you know. He was gone. A juvenile passenger in the car is now in custody. Police say one person inside the home had minor injuries. The owners of the car say it was stolen earlier this month. Code enforcement workers are still trying to determine if the home is structurally sound. An Anderson County Road is reopened after a tanker hauling alcohol crashed this morning. Police say the tanker flipped over along Grafenberg Road as the driver was swerving to miss a car. They say the tanker was headed to Wild Turkey Distillery with 6,600 gallons of 190 proof alcohol. The alcohol is highly flammable, so police closed the road until the crash was cleaned up. The driver wasn't injured, but moments after that crash, police say a septic tanker crashed into a culvert nearby. The driver of that truck was airlifted to UK Hospital, but is expected to be okay. A newly released report finds some Lexington fire stations should be moved to better protect the city. The independent report, which took nearly a year, also recommends two downtown fire stations be consolidated. Monique Blair talked to the city's public safety commissioner about the report. One of the main recommendations of that study is to combine two downtown fire stations, moving the station over on Marino Street over here to this station on West Jefferson Street. You know, if you have redundant coverage, and there, there might be a possibility to, to 
close a station or merge two stations, still provide the same level of co coverage to meet the standards, and yet not have to operate two separate fire stations. Another recommendation made by Public Safety Solutions Incorporated, which is a public safety consulting group hired by the city, was to add a 24th station to the Masterson Station area. Also, to move the station currently on Tate's Creek Road to Tate's Creek Road and Windermere, and to move Station 10 that currently sits on Finney Drive to Newtown Pike, north of New Circle Road. There's a roadmap for future growth and recommendations for locations where we anticipate growth. Commissioner of Public Safety Ronnie Baston says this study was done in an effort to improve efficiency without giving up any level of service. Now, Commissioner Baston says if these recommendations are made, jobs will not be lost in the process. He says this is all about moving around resources to make the fire department operate as efficient as possible. In Lexington, Monique Blair, WKYT. The study cost the city $68,000. The recommendations will be discussed during tomorrow night's Urban County Council meeting. It has been a sunny and warm day across the bluegrass, but some rain and storms are moving in tonight. Meteorologist Jim Caldwell joins us now with an early look at your forecast. Jim? We are tracking a line of showers, thunderstorms moving right toward us here in central and eventually into eastern Kentucky as well. Might even have a little bit of a bite with it when it comes rolling into our area. We've been watching it for a while. And what's happened is it just kind of blew up once the front got a little deeper into parts of Indiana and Illinois. The line started coming together. This area that we're watching kind of leading the way and what's going to press into Kentucky very soon. So you get the general idea that it's all moving right toward us. And some of the stronger areas are about to spill over into Kentucky right now as well. This very small section of Kentucky also highlighted for what they call a marginal risk of severe weather. It's not a big deal, but we could run into maybe an isolated, stronger thunderstorm here or there. Maybe even a severe thunderstorm across parts of Kentucky. You can see it's a pretty intense line leading the way. Out ahead of it, temperatures are still running in the mid and upper 70s, upper 60s out in eastern Kentucky, though, there in Harlan. But as we look at a 24 hour planner, temperatures will be the main focal point moving forward after this line gets through because our temperatures tomorrow are down into the mid 60s for highs. That's it. We have some 30s coming our way late in the week. I will track all of that coming up for you in just a few minutes. A billion dollars in construction projects are happening in Lexington right now. Much of it centers around Short Street, a small part in the heart of downtown. And many business owners in the area say they're fed up with the constant construction and street changes. WKYT's Miranda Combs has the story new at six. On any street, there are stories. Some just started, some are well established, but all are trying to grow. Is that the concern? That I think it absolutely. It? I think it absolutely is a concern. I mean, and it pretty much started about the same time that we opened. Karen West owns the Lexington Diner, a spot that sits on the corner of Short Street and Upper. So it's been one thing after another, and it all kind of culminates right on this corner. I don't know why, but it just happens to be all right. Four city projects at her front door. Upper is closed currently for construction of 21C, a boutique hotel set to open early next year. And while the street is closed, the city is getting some utility work done too. On top of that, a new streetscape for Short Street. Well, the problem started when they reconfigured the street. Gail Haynes owns the barber shop on Short Street just down from the diner. I've had 40 to 50 people come in and make comments about how messed up the street is. She says daily this two lane street is reduced to one lane. You know, we constantly have great big delivery trucks parked out front. We saw it ourselves during lunch hour. They've also changed parking on short. City officials say it didn't change the flow of traffic, but Haynes says there's nowhere for delivery trucks. And when there's an emergency, a police vehicle or a fire truck, they can't get through. The drivers end up stopping in a lane that should keep moving. All the business owners down here are annoyed. It's just like a, a three ring circus. Every day, you know, I come in and it's like, oh my goodness, what is it going to be today? Are there design flaws for Short Street? It is way too early to tell because, you know, there's a lot going on in Short Street. Jeff Fugate with Lexington Downtown Development Authority says they are trying to get in front of the Breeders' Cup at the end of the month and says besides some tweaks, the new streetscape is flowing as planned. And as for construction, these are growing pains that will pass. 
there's just a lot going on right now, and that's good because the alternative is nothing, and the alternative is no investment. But the concern for this diner owner is making it through the mess. She says they lose three to five hundred dollars a day because of economic development. It cuts down on our visibility. Uh, we kind of just blend into the background, which is construction and fencing, and not very pretty. We have to keep our eye on the prize at the end of this. From Henry Clay's public house, the view is always changing, but the sounds stay constant. So it, um, it works out for us, but we have. The owner, though, has been a businessman for decades and says it's all about perspective. So we have a few months of frustrating activity for years and years of potential good business. Is it frustrating to be trying to help the downtown, but people downtown are angry? You know, uh, construction is never fun, uh, but it's necessary. And in regard to parking on Short Street and causing basically a one-lane street where it should be two lanes, city officials tell me police are going to have a heavy presence in that area from here on out to cut down on people stopping where they shouldn't be stopping. Miranda, construction is inconvenient at any sure. time, but especially in such a busy area of downtown. And this may not surprise most, but that Short Street area, that three-block area, is actually where they have the most turnover for parking every day, so that just adds to it as well. Sure. Miranda, thank you mm -hmm. very much. New tonight, Keeneland leaders say the results of a review into the safety of their dirt track have been released after three horses suffered catastrophic injuries during the opening week of the fall meet. Keeneland had the executive director of the Racing Surfaces Testing Laboratory, Dr. Mick Peterson, review the track over the weekend. Keeneland says he looked at testing and daily measuring proceeding procedures. The review found the dirt surface met all pre meet test criteria and maintenance was being performed with protocols developed for the track. A Lexington chain of restaurants is trying to help a charity that lost donations to help people in Haiti. Last month, a cargo ship sunk off the coast of Haiti. On board was medicine, shoes, and Christmas gifts that Waves of Mercy, the organization, had spent the last year collecting. Once the owner of Saul Good heard what happened, he decided to do something to help. Next Wednesday, October 21st, Saul Good will donate 50% of its sales from 5 until 9 that night to Waves of Mercy. We've been just so blessed. I mean, the people of the Bluegrass have completely uh, given to us for seven years. We have three locations, and this is a really small way for us to give back, and it's our pleasure. All three Saul Good restaurants will take part in the relief effort next Wednesday. A Lexington firefighter has won a national contest, and he'll soon be on the cover of a well known magazine. Men's Health Magazine chose Tim Boniface as the ultimate men's health guy. He'll be featured on the cover of the November issue of Men's Health Magazine. Here's a look at the cover. He beat out more than 800 other men in the ultimate men's health guy contest. 